Arm does a nice job of getting the pitch out to him. Sometimes down here when you're taking it in, it's a quick, close pitch there and almost brings in. He hits the corner pylon. They're not going to give him a score, though. He must have stepped out about the one-yard line here. Take a look at his right foot as he stepped out. Mm, that was close there. It looks like he might have gotten to the corner. So it is second and goal for the one. What a tackle. Wow. Blowing through. Hawkins is nailed at the five. John Nash, this redshirt freshman, getting a shot because of injuries to Carlin Thomas and Antonio Crow, and he's making the most of it, isn't he? He certainly is. He's done a nice job here from his middle linebacker spot, playing with enthusiasm, firing through there. This is the second time now on a play just like this. The guard pulls. He gets in behind him and tackles the back. Doesn't have a chance to get out of his tracks. So, third and goal for the five. And... Clock moving at 7.49, only eight on the play clock, and Rice will call a timeout, and that could come back if they do get back into this game to haunt them as Ken Hatfield will visit about it. We'll take a brief timeout. Don't go away. 7.47 to go. 31. Third down goal to go from the five. Okoronkwo is back in. He had his shoulder dislocated. It's third and goal from the five. Herm to throw it. Booth cannot find a handle. Flag on Louisiana Tech. And on the defender, Olford, Jason Olford. And if that indeed is it, it'll be first down and goal to go. Now well, they're definitely going to get Olford here for the penalty. Gavin Booth is going to try to take it to the corner, but Olford's got his hand in his chest, and they're going to call it. And he's trying to get separation, and unfortunately, it's going to be a penalty against the Bulldogs for them. But watch Gavin Booth trying to get in there, but the contact is just too much, and the official is right in the end line. He's going to throw his flag. If he can get it out of his pocket. He's having a practice today. They've been adding up a little bit. It's a first, big, big first down, yeah. though, Bill. Gives him a first and goal here inside the three-yard line. And make it official at the two. Hawkins hit by a wall. He got to the one for Vincent Hawkins. Hawkins has yet to score a touchdown this year. Last year, 36 carries, 196 yards. A senior from Spring, Texas, out of Klein Oak High School. A couple of times here now, getting down near the goal line. They've gone to the full bone, full wishbone. You get your full back and your two half backs, and both times they've run the lead play. But the Bulldogs have done a nice job on that play, stacking it up. And Ken Hatfield, you see his red zone opportunities today. He's got the one touchdown and one field goal. And Rice again, pounding it inside. No indication yet. Well, they called it. The officials called it here. Touchdown, Rice. Right. Not signaled on the field yet. Yeah, the public address announcer said it, but there's been no indication from. That was Robbie Beck, the ball carrier, number 41, just to dive inside the fullback, and he looks like he dived. Did the line judge make the call as a as a touchdown? Apparently, and that was what the PA announcer went off of. No other official did so, though. And. Further review without the videotape. Touchdown, Rice. Beck will get credit. His sixth touchdown of the year. He had three in the win over Nevada, including the game winner last week, and the Owls get six more points. Well, you see the surge inside, and Beck is just driving. He's definitely in the end zone. There's no doubt about it. He's a yard deep inside the end line. Good call by the officials. Just a big pile in there, and I guess they just couldn't read, see it clear enough. So the point after. And it is good by Brandon Skeen. And the Owls have gotten two touchdowns. And Ken Hatfield wipes the brow. We've still got 6.53 to go in the third quarter. We may have a heck of a ball game yet. Yeah, the Owls have shown that they can score here a couple of scores in the, in the half. Less than six minutes to get both of those. And you know, just a 14-point deficit now, Bill. So Robbie Beck, the one-yard run and 31-17. Well, Rice is familiar with close calls as last week winning in overtime, 33-30 against Nevada. Week before, beating Navy by one, 21-20. They won at Hawaii, 27-24, 15-13 over Duke. They won at Houston, 
Now, the schedule, those teams haven't won a whole lot of ball games, but Rice has built confidence over that regardless and carried that through in the league play of 3-0 and coming in here today. And maybe we shouldn't be surprised that this team is showing the character to come back after being down 31-0. Well, Bill, this, this game is of big importance because of last night, what happened, Hawaii beat Fresno State, so the winner of this football game really controls the destiny of the WAC. They can they can win out and win this conference. Yep, the winner will be, well, Rice is in first right now, and obviously if he's the attack with a win, goes to 4-1, they'll take over the top spot. And the kickoff brought back out to the 31-yard line, and that's Curry with the return. He's got a touchdown earlier today, and... Another player down, this one for Rice. Louisiana Tech's going to have it first and 10 on its own 31-yard line here to start the second half. We're going to start the next possession, 6.45 to go in the third. Mitchell, the injured player. Well, we mentioned a little bit what's ahead conference-wise for the winner of this game. Let's see what the Owls have got remaining. They go to Fresno that... Remember, the uh, Bulldogs beaten last night in Hawaii in a wild one, 38-34, one in the morning, and I finally saw where Hawaii came back to beat them. Then Rice will play Tulsa in Houston, UTEP, and then at SMU. So not giving them anything, but Fresno the big one there. Well, I'll tell you, theoretically, if Rice could win this football game and go 4-0 in conference play, they would then be allowed to have at least one hiccup along the way and have one loss and still win the conference outright. So this is a big, big game for Rice, knowing they've got to go to Fresno. Probably a good, strong chance for those three remaining games to get wins. Yeah, and if they lost at Fresno, for example, Fresno already with two losses, there's the one that you say they've got to spare. Let's take a look at for Louisiana Tech. So if the dogs hang on here, they go 4-1. and one. They've got Boise State that is uh, playing for a share of first tonight. UTEP. Kansas State, the non-conference game, the makeup after the uh, postponement back in September, and then they finish up at Tulsa that is uh, just having a frightful season in the theme of Halloween and has been decimated by a lot of injuries as well. Speaking of which, another one hobbling off is Mitchell, the injured player, Julius, a linebacker from Grand Prairie, Texas. Here's coming into today. Rice 3-0, then Boise State, La Tech at 3-1, Hawaii at 4-2, Fresno 2-2. Two two. Still a lot of football to go in this wax season. McCown in trouble. They come on with a blitz and take care of business. Green. Brandon Green, number 87. The defensive end does a nice job. They're rushing, they're rushing four and just gets inside and pressures the quarterback. First real pressure that McCown has had on him today, Bill. You're going to see Brandon Green. He's insider. Just take a charge inside. Do a good job on his outside rush. Come inside and Dawson, the linebacker, covers on the outside and McCown unable to get away. We always talk about adjustments. Have they do, are they doing things differently, Gary, or just more effort? Just a little bit more effort, a little more directed. And now they're going to three-man rush. They're going to play the screen play. Second and 17, and the ball carrier, Daig, on the reception is brought down at the 29-yard line. John White, a sophomore from Grand Prairie, Texas, makes the stop there as Delwyn Day run up some impressive numbers here, but he's been under control so far today. It's kind of a thing that an offense coordinator, Conroy Hines for Louisiana Tech, has to make decisions now. You know, you're winning this ball game handily coming out here, 31 to 31 points up on the board. And take a look at the loose numbers on the day. The Conroy's got to make decisions about how to call this football game and make sure they're still productive offensively. The town in trouble on third and 13. Keeps the football, and he is hit and brought down at the 35. They'll have to punt it away. Now, two, di two drives now. The Rice defense has gone out there, stopping three plays and out, and forcing a punting situation again. Angler and White there to make the stop this time. Now, whatever Ken Hatfield told his offensive defensive group at halftime, it seems like it's worked. They've come out and responded very well. Hey, it's a full 60-minute ball game. Ken Hatfield said, hey, they won the first half. We need to win the second half, and they're certainly doing that right now. Fourth and five, and the punter Upton gets another dandy. On a scrimmage, there's a 36. It's fumbled inside the 10, and the receiver did the smart thing, Hatfield. He just fell on it after he couldn't find the handle. Brazil was there to cover on the play. And Rice will get it again. That's the good news for our fans. Bad news, you've got it inside your own 10-yard line where they'll take over on the 8, a 55-yard kick, and Upton's done a nice job. Want to 
remind you, check out the latest in scores from around college football, in particular the Southwest region. Go to the Southwest Sports Report. That is tonight and every night at 10 o'clock only on Fox Sports Net. First and 10 from the 8 for the Rice Owls, down 31-17, but have scored 17 unanswered. 14 of those here in the second half. Kern continues. 20. And Kyle Hurm, a fantastic run out to the 25-yard line. A 17-yard pickup, and that gets Rice out of the hole. Well, when you're 5'8", 175 pounds, you want to run, and you want to run away from people. Watch his ability here of eluding people. Just a quick feet in, out, stop, and start. Kyle Herm just picking up a little blocking he has. Okoronko's out there. Is that Gavin Booth trying to get a block? He actually runs between Booth and the defender and scoots for some more yards. First and ten. Hatfield broke one tackle, and then that mother load comes on. And Olford finally grabs him. Wallace is the one that made the initial stop. Knocked out of bounds. No, they said forward progress stopped before then, so the clock continues to run with 4.12 to go in the third period. 31-17. And having a loss of three yards on the play. Good job by the Bulldog defense of getting back there and making a stop on the play. See Julius down in on the, on the cart. Not good news for the Bulldogs. Burns pass underthrown to Bradley. And now it'll be third down and 15. And we've got a penalty flag on the, on the play, Bill, in the offensive line. Are you possibly a holding call? Well, if Ken Hatfield looks on, he knows his club. They've dug such a hole, there's just not much margin for air. Holding on the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. You almost feel that you must get something on every possession. And also, at least win the field position battle here, because you got to figure La Tech's going to explode again sooner or later. Well, whatever they do on first and second down, they're key down to them. They have to have positive yardage. When they lost four yards on first down, set up a second and a long, and now a third and long. Third and 15. Flag thrown as Booth, the intended receiver, and Brazil, the defender, covering. It'll be a pass interference against the Bulldogs. And Corey Brazil put his left hand and pushed Gavin Booth as he's going by, and definitely a flag. The line judge on the near side of the field, right there on the spot, and makes the makes the throws the flag. Homecoming crowd not real happy about that call, as you would expect. Well, look here, his left hand is going to get in there, and he's going to push him with it right there, and impedes the. The runner from coming around, and there's a flag, no doubt. Watch the official here. There's no indecision on his part. Brazil with the left hand, you can't do that. You can't make contact. That was a third and 15, Gary. Gives them the first to 10 at the 36. The touchdown, the last touchdown, they had the interference call that gave them a first to go with the two, and that was on a third down situation. So Rice getting some breaks. They've taken advantage of it so far in the second half. Throwing blitz here. Herm rolls out, sets up, fires, looking for Weber and incomplete. And that Weber trying to run the little flag route. Got two deep zone coverage. Got a corner squatting short, trying to take away the short flat route. And Herm's trying to lay it in behind him. There's too much juice on that pass. Weber with just two receptions in the year, but one of them a 38 yard touchdown pass. Second and ten, the ball on the 36 now. Nice trailing by 14. Herm sets up the throw again. Going deep, and it is caught on a great leaping grab by Gavin Booth. Booth, the sophomore from Grand Prairie, Texas, brought down by Willie Shepard by 23 yards and moved those chains. Well, what allowed Kyle Herman able to throw this football was his offensive protection. Watch the offensive line. Nobody's coming through at all. And look, I tell you, Herm is just stepping up. This is just target practice. It is a high pass, but Gavin Booth, a tall receiver, goes in front of three defenders. A Shepard number 20, and, there, and Bobby Gray making the stop. Herm fires again on first down, and it is complete 
at the 33-yard line. Michael Jackson.